Hey there, this is John from Heroes and Legends, and I'm trying to revitalize the comic book channel a little bit. Now, if you used to watch this channel, well, thanks for hanging on all this time. It's been a couple of years since I posted a video here, but I used to do pull list videos. Um, those weren't great because I usually didn't get my comics until like, I don't know, Mondays typically when they come out Wednesday, by the time I make the video, it's like Tuesday at best. So the new books are coming out. I just felt like it was too little too late, but I thought I really wanted to get back into it a little. And I figured the best way to do that was to maybe do some haul videos. So I pick up stuff, usually cheap stuff at shows. There's a lot of shows around me. They're small shows, but you can find deals a lot of the time. So I thought maybe I would get involved in the community a little bit that way. Of course, a lot of my time is still, most of my time will still go to my Magic the Gathering channel, which has been very successful over the last few years. We're up to almost 20,000 subscribers now, which is incredible. So if any of you crossed over, thank you. But I figured, yeah, let's talk some comic books. And I'll kind of cut the rest of the preamble and just get into it. I went to a few different shows recently. I won't show you everything I got from those shows. I got a lot of dollar books and stuff, but... Just to keep this video moving and try to keep it under 20 minutes, I figured I'll show you some of the highlights. And then maybe later on in other videos, just show you some of the lesser stuff here and there sprinkled through. So just want to start off with a comic book show I went to. This is a small show, and they usually do it about four times a year now, like every season or so, which is pretty awesome. But you see a lot of the same vendors. You get to know the people a little bit. I kind of know who to go to and who not to go to. The first vendor that I wanted to always kind of get in there and like see their stuff right away, I always run right to this guy's table because he always has really fair prices and he's always got new stuff. He's got them priced to move. He wants to turn over his inventory. A lot of times you go to these shows and people have a lot of good comic books, but I don't know why they're there because the prices are like higher than eBay and I'm sure it's just a social thing for them. They're not really trying to sell things. They just want to hang out and talk to people. And they just have these really expensive books. So I steer clear of those tables. I kind of know who those people are. But this one guy is amazing. And the first book, New Mutants, number 18, not amazing condition. I mean, you can see from the sides a little bit, the pages are a little off white to yellowish. And the creases on the spine, there's a few little creases and stuff. But this is the first appearance of Warlock. I didn't have the book. And he was only charging $5. So I was like, hey, you know what? Might as well pick it up. Next book I got from him as well and that is Watchmen number one. And this is something I actually never picked up and always kind of intended to. And Watchmen came out when I was too young, really, to buy comics. So a few years later, I started getting into collecting comics, and I had read, of course, Watchmen and Trades, but never owned a copy of the book. He was asking $10 for it, and it just seemed like, you know what, maybe the time to pick it up. Pretty nice book, too. I mean, a few nicks at the top left, but nothing major. The book looks really, really nice. Next thing that I got, also from that same vendor, was... Oh, no, that was the last thing I got from that vendor. Okay, this book came from a different vendor. And this guy, I always check out his stuff, too. His prices are probably a little more fair. Kind of what you'd expect to pay. I mean, better than eBay, but if you're going out to the show, I usually like to find better deals. But I find myself usually picking up maybe one book from him every time because the prices are fair and he does have things you can't always find very easily. This was a good example of that. This was Daredevil 181, The Death of Electra, another book I just never had. I like the old Frank Miller stuff, especially the Daredevil runs. And I have like Born Again. I had that from when I was a kid, actually, that I bought back issues. But this one I just never had, so I thought I'd grab it. Now, this next place I went to, the next uh, table, I've never seen this person before. And... I picked this book up, and it was kind of funny because this is a book I've been looking for in good condition for a really long time, and it's Batman number 426, first part to death in the family, and this is a direct, or I'm sorry, this is a newsstand variant. So I have been looking for this book a long time. Whenever I see it, it's like beat up. I have an old beat up copy, but I wanted something kind of nice because this is one of my favorite stories, and again, this was still before I started buying comics as a kid. So I always was looking at these like on the wall at the comic book store. I never could really afford them. Years later, I did find like a beat up copy that I got for a few dollars. But I wanted something really nice. And finally, I found it. So this guy actually was trying to sell his pressing service. But he had a huge collection of comics. And they were all Marvel DC. A lot of the big runs from the major books. Amazing Spider-Man, Batman, Detective, Action Comics. Things like that. Fantastic Four. Like some of the big runs. His prices were fair. They were not great deals by any stretch of the imagination, 
But I started looking through his stuff, and I'm like, wow, he's got, like, complete runs here. And I'm looking at his old Amazing Spider-Man. He had Silver Age Amazing Spider-Man, like, major first appearances, like, $800, $1,000. They were all, like, pressed and clean, too. They looked amazing. So I was like, well, I'm not buying those, but does he have something a little more affordable that I haven't been able to find? So I went to the Batmans. I looked for this first, and sure enough, it was there. And the price was, I would consider a fair price for the condition that the book's in. I mean, the thing it was... He charged me, I think it was about $25 for this. And, okay, maybe it's a little better than the fair price. He actually knocked a lot off. Basically, I think everything I bought from him came to about $125. I'll show you some of the other books in a second. And he knocked those down to 100 So it actually turned out to be a really good deal, especially considering, again, the condition the book was in. So really happy to find this. And I also grabbed from him the second part. So this is another one that I had in horrible condition. This is number 427. This is the direct edition. The only thing with this particular copy, there's a crease right over here. And it's also the same type of crease on the back cover. And it doesn't feel like a crease from like reading the comic. It feels like maybe it was a print defect. So it's not the worst thing in the world by any means. Best copy I'm probably going to find of the book because everything else is amazing. So... I think I'm going to stick with this one. I'm happy with it. So, uh, yeah, really awesome to find those. So a couple parts of Death in the Family. So I figured, hey, does he have year one? Because I've been trying to find a year one, part one, in good shape. And sure enough, he did. So that's kind of awesome. And, again, beautiful copy of the book there. Looks incredible. And whenever I find these, they're just beat up. And I know these black covers on these last three books, they're very difficult to find in good condition a lot of the time. So that's kind of is what it is. But this person, I mean, looked incredible. Incredible. I picked up one other book. This was one that isn't really an expensive book or anything, but it's just something I've wanted for a while. Can't find it in good condition usually. Or the colors are really faded. It's a yellow cover. But it's Amazing Spider-Man 225. This is a full killer appearance. Full killer cover appearance, as a matter of fact. As I bumped the table. Full killer's dancing around up there. Okay, so yeah, it's um, it's not worth much, but it's just something I've wanted for a long time, and I like that character. I mean, everyone has that character that like they like for some reason, and nobody else likes them. Yeah, I guess for me, it's full killer. Uh, so I wanted to get this book, and it's a a newsstand too. So kind of cool, amazing condition. I mean, it's so bright and colorful. The colors really pop on him. Okay, so. That was what was going on at the comic book show. But I'll tell you something I learned over the years. If you want good deals, don't go to the comic book show. Um, sometimes, of course, you do find them. And I found some pretty good ones here. But if you want the really strong deals, go to places that don't specialize in comics. And that's what I did. So one of the places that I've gone to recently was actually a sports card show. So I like sports cards from the 80s. And I'll buy a lot of those. They were overproduced. But the, that was the time I was collecting when I was a kid. So I love the 80s stuff. And it might not be worth anything. But sometimes you can get it real cheap. So I do like that. So I'll go to those shows, look around. But there's always like one or two people with comics. And they're always amazing deals. Because it's not the market for comics there. It's not people trying to pick those up. Now, I saw people going through the boxes before me. And I thought, they're going to grab all the good stuff. But as a matter of fact, that wasn't the case. I'm not going to show you everything I got there. I got a lot of dollar books. I'll show some in another video maybe, but just to keep things moving. Uh, this one, this is Action Comics 345. Silver Age Action Comics. Real nice condition. The colors are super bright on this. And it's got Alan Funt from Canon Camera. So I believe this is the first appearance of Alan Funt. Um, <laughs> which is a key, huge key issue, of course. And this book is really nice. I mean, yeah, it's a little like, dirty. I mean, a little grayed at the top there. You got the spine ticks, which you're going to find in these books. I got this for $4, though. And that's the thing. They had a lot of Silver Age books that were in nice condition for like 2 3 $4 dollars. I probably should have just bought them all, you know, and just kept them or whatever. But um, that's one of them. The next one is another book. This one's a little more recent. This is Action Comics 395. But again, it's a little beat. I mean, you can see the corners there and the spine text. But it's normal, again, for this age of book. And it just had a really cool color with the color yellow cover with the... Try that again. Had a really cool yellow cover. Um, that I just thought looked amazing. So I was like, yeah, I'll grab it. This was like two bucks. So why not? 
All right, got some Silver Age Detective comics to go along with this. Uh, this one is 334. Detective Comics 334. I thought this was kind of cool because the colors on this, again, were super vibrant. Uh, that purple is really awesome. And again, you got the spine ticks. It's got a date stamp on it. Uh, there's a subscription crease going down right there. So there's some issues here, of course. But again, I think I paid $5 for this one. Or no, for less than that. I think this one was like another 2 or $3 buck, actually. So I was like, sure, I'll take it, right? And I got one more Silver Age Detective. I actually picked up a few other books, again, that were some Silver Age. I'll show them on another video, though, um, just so we can kind of get through everything. But this is Detective Comics 364. Again, the colors really pop. You see a little something going on down here, of course, um, and the spine ticks and such. But overall, really nice-looking book. This is a Riddler appearance as well, so that's awesome. Really, really nice find. This one was about 5 bucks. All right, so dollar bin time. Uh, I won't show you. I'll just show you some, how many, three books I found in the dollar bin. I actually grabbed a bunch more, but these were maybe the highlights. Uh, this one, Moon Knight, number 60. Stephen Platt, last issue of Mark Spector, Moon Knight. I found one of these in a dollar bin years ago, and it was not in perfect condition. It wasn't bad. This thing is in awesome condition. Like, I can't find a thing wrong with this. That black and white cover, not always easy to find, looking nice. The funny part is this, in the next book I'm going to show you, we're in sleeves that look like they had been through everything. The sleeves are brown. They were all like torn. I thought when I opened it, the book can't be in that great a shape. And when I looked at the book, I'm like, wow, I can't find a thing wrong with this book. So <laughs> it was a very fortunate find. It's kind of funny with these Moon Knights, these high number Moon Knights by, by uh, Stephen Platt. If you can find them... Uh, in dollar bins and sometimes you can which is amazing to me still you think the secret on these would be out by now but they do show up in there i mean the big ones of course are this one being the last issue the ones with spider-man are pretty popular too but if you find any stephen plant moon knights i'd say pick them up if they're for the right price many times they are okay here's another dollar find that i was like what what is this doing in here uh this is new mutants number 100 this is the third printing so, of course, you know, the first printing with the purple background, the second printing has the numbers, the 100 final issue in gold, and this one has them in silver. So that's how you can tell the difference. But I'll tell you, this book, I've seen it at shows. In fact, I went to a comic book show a few weeks before I went to the sports card show. I saw a number of these going for anywhere between $15 and $25 in various conditions. And this one being just a dollar, I say, sure, yeah, pick it up. Um, and what's funny is... It's just that a lot of people would assume the first print's worth more, but because of the lower print run and as the printings went on, people just start into buying these weird variants. So, yeah, there it is. It actually looks pretty sweet. I like this, the look of this anyway, better than the first printing personally. But uh, there you go. The other dollar book I found, which was a big pickup for me, was Magnus Robot Fighter number five. Um, so I found this in there for a buck, and I didn't have this one. Trying to build as much of a pre-Unity Valiant as I can collection. And this is one I did not have. And trying to pick them up with the coupons and the cards, right, when you can. I saw this for a buck and I was like, there's no way the coupon's in there. The card slash coupons. They, they, it's got to be gone, right? So for a dollar in the middle of Sparks Card Show, I wasn't going to open it up and like try to figure it out. I was just like, I'll take it for a buck. And whatever happens, happens. Sure enough, I got it home. And yeah, they were there. They were intact. So that was awesome, and this is also the first Rye number one flip book. Awesome copy to find, in real nice condition for a dollar. <laughs> I was like, wow. Uh, you don't see that all the time anymore with Valiant, because people are starting to figure that out, of course, with the movies and television shows coming from Valiant. A lot of people looking for them more than ever now. I got some more Valiant coming up later in the haul. All right, so that was some of the highlights from that sports card show. I have more. I'll show them in another video someday, but we'll just keep moving along i went to a garage sale show i well, i guess it was kind of like a flea market for the weekend and i looked around there's one guy selling comics and he had a couple dollar boxes and then he had a box where it said everything was marked um according to price and i looked through his dollar bins there are a couple interesting things in there that jumped out at me that i thought i'd pick up i looked through his box with the prices marked they were fair prices. I wasn't really in the mood for paying fair prices that day, though. <laughs> so I was kind of like, oh, there's some cool books here, but, you know, 
eh, not meant to be. So I was kind of lingering a little bit trying to figure out what dollar books I wanted to take. And he saw me lingering. He's like, you know, the prices are negotiable. I'll knock off half of the ones marked. I'm like, well, okay, well, that changes everything. So he did that. And he also knocked off even more uh, once I kind of get the total. So got an amazing deal here from this one vendor, the only guy selling comics. Um, but it was awesome that I was able to find that. So uh, out of the dollar bin, I'll show a couple of dollar books first. Then we'll go into some of the bigger books that he had. This was a Spawn number 20 UPC variant. So newsstand. I uh, love to pick up these image newsstands when I can find them. The best one I have, I think I got a... Um, I have to look. I had I got a couple others of the show that I didn't pull out to show you here. And actually, I got maybe one or two that are even better than this. But uh, I'll, I'll show them in another video. But this one, for a buck, sure. Why not? Or actually, even less by the time he knocked everything off. This book... Another one, 24 UPC, real nice shape. So there you go. I like these newsstand variants of these books. I mean, they even have a different feel to the paper and everything. It just is really just unique and different. Okay, so some of the big books now. I'll go with the biggest book first when it comes to at least price-wise. Uh, this was kind of amazing when I saw this in here. I like picking up Kirby Fantastic Fours. I mean, the big keys... Uh, I'll probably never be able to afford like Silver Surfer and stuff, but <laughs> uh, this one, number 33, first appearance of a Tuma, and he had this marked at 100 bucks. So it's kind of funny because I was like, 100 bucks, it's probably worth that, but it's in really, really nice shape, as you can see there. I can't find a whole lot wrong with the book. I mean, the corners got a little wear and stuff, a little tick here and there, but the book's really, really nice. So I, I figured, well, okay, he's knocking half off. It's 50 bucks. That's still a little more than I wanted to pay that day, even though I know it was still a good deal. And I kind of got everything I wanted, and he added it up. And a lot of times, you know, sometimes they'll knock off the price. So he kind of added it up, and then I was like, well, you know, it's more than I wanted to spend. And I said, you know what, I think I'll just put back the Fantastic Four, and I'll just, you know, take the others. And he was kind of like, well, maybe I can knock off a little more. So I ended up getting this for about 40 bucks. And that's kind of insane. So <laughs> I was like, yeah, I can't pass that up. All right, I'll, I'll spend I'll spend that for it. And yeah, the book looks incredible. So just an awesome deal. But there's more when you see this. Now, this surprised me a little bit. Because this next book was actually packaged with another book. And uh, this is, of course, Power Man and Iron Fist, number 50. First time Luke Cage and Iron Fist are together, working together. So this is a pretty big key right now, especially with the Luke Cage Netflix show and all, the Defenders. So I expected this to be kind of expensive. He had this marked at 60, so he knocked it down to 30 and then knocked down a little more off my price too. So probably got this around 25 or so. And it came with another book too, which I'll show you in just a second. So two books are packaged in here for that original $60 price. And this one was the one I really wanted, of course. The other book, though, was not bad either, it turns out. Actually, I didn't even know. And first, I'll, I'll tell you, I mean, pretty good condition. I mean, not super white-white, but a little off-white. I mean, little spine roll, maybe some ticks. But overall, like, not bad. So, this was also in the same in the same um, sleeve. Power Man and Iron Fist, number 54. So I didn't even really know if there was any significance to this book. I mean, he looked at it, he and he was pretty knowledgeable of comics. I mean, he knew what all this stuff was, but uh, he he didn't really say anything about this. I didn't know about it, but this is apparently the first appearance of Heroes for Hire, the first time they come up with that name as their agency or what have you, So or, or their kind of headline name. So that was kind of cool. I mean, it's not worth as much, obviously, as 50 or anything like that. Don't get me wrong, but it's a real nice copy. The colors are really strong on it, so... Pretty nice pickup to just kind of have packaged in there, definitely. And uh, then he had a Red Sonia number one from Marvel. Um, and I never read Red Sonia. I was never kind of into that book or Conan or anything. So I don't know that much about the character. But it, uh, this was marked at 10, so I got it for less than 5. So I was like, hey, first issue, why not? And it is a good book to have, I think. The other kind of big money book I got from him was this one here. Tales of the Teen Titans, number 44, and this is the first Nick, uh, Nick, yeah, Nick, you know Nick Grayson, uh, the first Dick Grayson as Nightwing, and this is a big key to find because of that black cover, again, another book that's hard to find in good condition, it's got a little Nick up there, and a couple little ticks, 
But for the most part, I mean, wow. He had this one marked at 75, so again, knocking half off, a little more than half off, uh, which was really nice for for this book. So, yeah, there you go. Go to the flea markets, go to the... <laughs> and that wasn't really a flea market, flea market. It was kind of a weekend event they were holding, and it was supposed to be a garage sale event, like, like a one-time flea market. It wasn't like a regular flea market. So, good deals there, good deals at the sports card show. I'll wrap the video up. Let's see, I'm at 20 minutes going a little longer than I wanted to, but let me wrap it up with a few eBay buys or auction buys. This first one's actually not eBay. This is Eternal Warrior number four, first full appearance of Bloodshot. Um, hot book right now because, of course, Bloodshot eventually going to be a movie. And I picked this up on Alex the Comic Hoarders auction for just $35 with shipping from Spidey Fan. Spidey Fan was doing the auction with him that particular week. Uh, if you're watching this, you probably watch Alex, but his auctions are awesome. Uh, he does a lot for the comic book community, and I always try to follow him, like, on Snops and whatever he's doing on his channel, too. And when I get to catch... This is actually the only time I got to catch an auction live, um, but I will definitely want to do it again, because this was a really awesome deal. Thank you, Spidey fan, if you happen to watch this. Um, really great deal, and a book I wanted for a long time, really ever since I was a kid. And couldn't afford it then, because it was, like, way too much back in those days, but uh, I just wanted it for a long time. It wasn't just because of the movie or anything. Uh, again, just trying to fill in a lot of the old Valiant. This is post-Unity, just still right after Unity, but still, of course, a big book right now. So, really happy that I got an awesome condition, too. Like, I can't find anything wrong with this thing. Um, so, yeah, check that. Check out those auctions for sure. They're amazing. Uh, this is an eBay purchase, and I got it real cheap. You know, the thing about eBay I found is, you know, don't go shopping Sunday nights. Go in the mornings or overnights. You can find some good deals. This is Exo Man of War number one. Uh, it's got a little bit of, this looks like a printing error to me. It's not like a stain. It looks like almost like the purple ink ran a little bit. Other than that, can't really find anything wrong with the book. Maybe the corner is a little, little worn, but a uh, great book to try to pick up and got this cheap. I found this for, I think it was like after shipping 15 or something like that. It was pretty crazy. So yeah, X of Man of War, number one. Got it finally. Another one I wanted when I was a kid. Um, got another Fantastic Four. Silver Age, number 92, a little bit later in the run, but for Kirby, but uh, yeah, just wanted to grab, whenever I grab these, it's funny, you can find these Fantastic Four comics pretty cheap right now, uh, I think mostly because people aren't really thinking about Fantastic Four, and they don't have anything imminent happening when it comes to the world of entertainment, so a lot of times you'll see these books go up, people throw on runs of these books, they'll sell for like 5 to $10 a piece, and even in nice shape, this one's in a super nice shape, so... Yeah, just keep an eye out for those. If you are a fan of Fantastic Four, there are opportunities right now anyway to get them at good prices. Amazing Spider-Man, two eighty nine. dollars This was another kind of cheap eBay pickup. Um, not a huge, huge value book here. It's one of the early Hobgoblin, early-ish Hobgoblin appearances. But I always wanted this book too. And this had like a really nice copy that was in the auction, really bright colors. So... I think I only picked it up for just a few dollars. I think after shipping it was like five bucks or something. So again, it just depends on when you go on there. And I'll look at night, like before I go to bed, like at what's happening overnight and put on a bid for something. If it's like an end of three or four in the morning or in the morning, I'll wake up and just look at stuff in the, like between like 6 a.m. like 10 a.m. It's probably their best times to find stuff on there, find deals or find people that don't normally sell comics. Maybe they sell some comics, but sell other stuff, you know, things like that. They won't have as big of a comic following. All right, next one I got from eBay, Batman, The Dark Knight Returns. This is part three, and just a real nice copy. A little, little nicks at the top, a little bit, but really, really nice copy, and I could not um, turn it down because it was, again, like only like $15 after shipping. I think I paid like 20 22 or something. So, yeah, I figured this is one that... I had a beat up copy of and just wanted a nice one. These are hard to find in good condition. Those backings, like those blue backs of these books, always look scuffed. And of course, the darker colors always look scuffed. So, yeah. And also, that cre you always get that crease on the side where someone opened the book too far. So, this was a real nice copy. So, I figured I'd pick it up. And last, well, actually, second to last book I want to show you Amazing Spider Man 299. A real nice copy of this book. This is the cameo of Venom before his first appearance. There's a few cameos of Venom, but this is like the one on the last page where you see him fully like standing there. 
And uh, this is just a really awesome book to have. And not super expensive, considering it's a pretty nice Venom cameo. $2.98, $2.99, of course, are the first two Todd McFarlane Spider-Mans. I have $2.98 in really nice shape. I'll have to show it in another video. I actually didn't get it that long ago. Got a great deal on it early this year. This one, I actually got another amazing deal. And after shipping, this came to about 50 bucks. So this was someone who doesn't normally sell comics and they were selling like their own personal stuff and no one was paying attention to it. It ended at a good time. I was able to pick it up at a good price. So there you go. All right, last thing I want to show you try to keep this under 30 minutes i guess <laughs> this i picked up yep harbinger number one try to get all of that in there okay so this is um another ebay pickup 9.2 cgc uh, got the newer label it was about a year ago that they slabbed it so amazing deal on this book i was looking at this one seller they were selling a bunch of really cool like 90s and, and 80s some older stuff too cgc stuff real high grades and multiples of a lot of books it seemed like they really undervalued the 9.0 the 9.0 through 9.4s and maybe overvalued 9.6 9.8 i mean those are great for certain books right like 9.8 is incredible so they actually had a copy of this 9.2 for sale they had a 9.6 and 9.8. The 9.8 they were selling for like $1,300 or something. <laughs> that wasn't happening. The 9.6 was, I think, something like $800 or something. So not happening. But the 9.2 was actually going cheaper than I've seen the book go for raw. They were selling this for about $130. So I picked it up at $129.99. So I paid for this. And um, for the 9.2 copy with, of course, the coupon attached. I have a copy of this without the coupon which I, which is actually beautiful, but if you get it slabbed, you're going to get that incomplete tag on it, that green color, and no one wants that. No one wants that. So uh, I ended up getting one already slabbed, so I knew it was fine. I wouldn't have to deal with it, and I just wanted to get it with a coupon before it was too late, because this book has been going up and up and up recently. All these old Valiant books, the keys are going up. Luckily, I have most of the keys, if not all the keys from the pre-Unity time, um, I just need to pick up some random issues here to kind of fill that in. But this was one I was really worried about. So uh, I got some more that I picked up recently too that I'll show you again in some other videos. But I figured I'll cut it off now before we get to 30 minutes. So anyway, I hope that I can contribute a little bit to this community and um, show some hauls here and there. I don't know how frequent I'll be able to do it. Of course, my magic channel does take a lot of my time especially at certain times of the year when new products coming out and stuff. But I thought this was fun to kind of do. So just wanted to uh, kind of jump in and kind of get involved again. And at some point, um, I'm kind of organizing my stuff. At some point, I may try to sell some stuff off too to kind of support the channel and um, both my channels. So anyway, with that being said, hey, thanks for watching. Please remember to like, subscribe. Have a great day.